So we are now up here in the lab to have a further look on the anatomy and adaptations of a chitin. I'll be using this one right here, the green chitin as a reference species. But if you're working with a different type of species of chitin, well, then you can still use this video as a reference because a lot of what I will talk about will be something that's quite general throughout the different species. So let's get started. So let's have a closer look at the green chitin. We'll start by looking at the dorsal view, which is this what you can see right here. And then we'll move on to the ventral view afterwards, which, which is the soft tissue underneath. So if you look at the dorsal view here, the first thing you'll notice are these eight plates. Now, as you might remember from the adaptive radiation video that Alice did, the eight plates are a distinctive feature for the polyplacophorus, which are the chitons. Most animals in the phylum mollusca will have one shell or two shells. So you have the bivalves, the mussels and the cockles. Well, they have two shells, but then you also have the gastropods, where, which is the snails. And a lot of those will have one single shell. So for chitons to evolve into having eight plates instead of one big shell must mean that there's some sort of benefit from, from having this. And what I can tell you, and I'll show you this once we turn it over, is that these eight plates right here will increase the flexibility of the chiton a lot. And, and they'll need that for a, a specific behavioral response that they have um, to watch, for example, predators. But we'll get back to that. Let's just talk about the plates a bit more first and the, the structure of the plates. So as you can see, they're actually overlapping a bit. So this one right here is overlapping with this plate, which is overlapping with that one and that one and all the way down. The first overlapping plate will be where the head is, which is up here. So the head is behind this plate and behind the mantle that's, that's in there. Because it is the mantle that excretes these plates and, and forms it, just like in any other type of, of mollusk species that have shells. Now, I'm just going to move it a bit there. There you go. So it is definitely holding on and it's using the foot as a suction to hold on to, to this board right here. Um, and I can definitely feel that when I move it around. It's, it's quite strong. And some chitons, like the snakeskin chiton, have an incredible strength in their foot to latch on to rocks, for example, and to, to hard surfaces, which still need as a protection from predators that might come and try and, and pick them off, such as um, seagulls or, or crabs. And, and that actually links us back to the plates because they are quite hard, you can hear here. And, and this, of course, is also an adaptation to protecting yourself from, from predators getting a hold on to you. But it's also a protection from desiccation. As I said earlier in this video, desiccation is, is a big threat to a lot of marine animals, and especially the ones that are living in the intertidal zone, where they'll be exposed to the air and the wind during the day. And by having this really hard surface and having these plates, they can actually keep in a lot of the water content from being exposed and evaporated by, by the sun and the wind. A really interesting feature about the plates is that that is also where the eyes are. So chitons can see, they can see light and dark. This is the whole reason why they can actually figure out if they're exposed to the, to the sun and light or not. So I'll show you this photo right here, which is from an article showing the eyes. And the eyes themselves are these tiny little dot dots that you can see on, on the photo. And they have quite a good vision because they have, even though the eyes are, are very simple, they have so many of them that they can, they can form um, quite, quite good images compared to what you would probably expect from these kind of animals. And this right here is from the same article um, that I showed you the pictures of the eyes of. And that actually shows kind of how you would see a, a picture or a silhouette of a fish and then what a chitin um, can potentially form from using its eyes. So, so you still get that silhouette kind of, um, of image as a chitin. Now, this right here that you can see that's surrounding the plates and the mantle is called the girdle. And the girdle is also covered by these tiny little scales, which again is a protection from 
desiccation and from um, increased protection against predators that might do you harm as well. So they have these fine, fine, fine little scales all the way around. So when it comes to looking at responses of chitons, I will show you what happens when you turn it over. So here you have to imagine that a chitin could, for example, be picked off by a rock, um, by a bird, and would then have to defend itself. And this is where the eight scales come into play, where I talked about how they they give this amount of flexibility to the chitin, which is displayed in, in this behavioral response. So I'm just gonna pick it up and I need to scoot it over. And then when I lay it down, you can see that it immediately starts curling up. Now, this is the foot that you can see right here and the mouth is up here. And you can see that it has this response of curling up. And if I were to kind of push it a bit more, you can sometimes get it to respond even, even more quick. So this could be a response that you could look at in your investigation in terms of, of how quickly it will respond in different salinities or um, in different temperatures. Does that have an effect to the ability of the chitin to protect itself in this way? So you could, for example, start the time and measure from when you turn it over until the front and the end here overlaps then it will have a full protection of the soft body tissue underneath. So let's have a look at the ventral side of the chitin now. Um, what I've done is that I've placed it on a petri dish and then gotten it to hold on using its foot and then I could turn the petri dish upside down and then that way we can have a nice look at the ventral side without it being too invasive for the chitin. So the first thing we'll talk about is the outer edges right here, which is the girdle that we saw before that had tiny scales on top. And as you can see, that's a, a complete soft tissue underneath. And right next to the girdle, you have these dark filamentous parts. And if I just zoom in and show you a bit more what they look like, you might be able to actually guess it already. So it is this part right there and right there. So maybe you guessed it, these are the gills and a lot of gills will be in this kind of, of um, feathery and dark structure that you see right here. The gills themselves are placed in the mantle cavity, which is kind of this little um, dent that you have all around. And if you were to, through a dissection, go in behind the gills and behind the foot that's here in the mantle, well, then you go straight into the mantle cavity where, where the soft mantle tissue is. As I just said, the foot is the one right here, the big part and biggest structure that you can find on a chitin. And that is because it's, it's such a vital part of the survival for a chitin. In order to survive, it must have food, and in order to get food, it must be able to move around, which is the purpose of the foot. Both move around, but also hold on to rocks, um, as we talked about before, in case a predator wants to, for example, try and eat it, it can use this really strong suction of the foot to protect itself. Just above the foot, we have the mouth. You can see it's this kind of dark line right here, and the mouth is an indication of where the head is. So the mouth itself is this little tiny line, dark line, and then around it is the head of the chitin. So just by looking at the ventral side of a chitin, we have again highlighted these key traits that Alice talked about in her adaptive radiation video, which are the muscular foot, a head and then a mantle. Now that was it on the ecology and anatomy of chitons. Now it's up to you to find a specific thing that you really enjoyed about these and turn it into an investigation.